The city of Gallipoli is among the most evocative places of Salento, thanks to its territorial configuration and the prestigious historical and artistic heritage that embellishes the historic center of the village. The sea is the main protagonist of this prodigious beauty, and the vivid waters of the Ionian frame in a blue background the entire urban settlement. The name Gallipoli recalls the ancient Levantine cultural heritage and anticipates in its etymology the genius loci of this land, Gallipolis from the Greek Citta Bella. Its beauties take on various forms in the oldest part of the village, perched on a small island connected to the mainland by a bridge. It is in the Byzantine Middle Ages that Gallipoli begins to take on a strategic role within the Mediterranean chessboard, especially for the control of the Ionian Sea routes. However, the 16th century is the turning point for the economic and demographic life of the city, especially for the production and export by sea of olive oil. Even today, it is possible to visit the ancient Hypogean oil mills, for several centuries protagonists of the entire economy of the territory. Among these, it is characterized by its remarkable beauty, the municipal Hypogeum oil mill. Located under the rooms of Granafe Palace, the mill is an important testimony of the proto-industrial heritage of Salento, enhanced by the presence of the original equipment used for centuries for the pressing of the olives. For a long time, the link between the land and the sea here in Gallipoli has been lived in an intense and fruitful way, thanks also to the wisdom of the inhabitants, who have succeeded in combining the green gold of the olive groves of the interland with the blue roots of the sea. Even today, the port life of Gallipoli is vital and laborious, recalling the ancient seafaring vocation of the city, which is profitably active in maritime trade and fishing. For this reason, in Gallipoli the docks of the port take picturesque forms, animated by numerous fishermen. In the small fish market, all the fresh products of the sea are exposed to the eyes of visitors, among which the red prawns, crustaceans typical of the Gallipoli Sea, stand out. The tourism industry currently serves as a driving force for the beautiful city's economy, boosted by numerous public and private interventions in the hospitality and culture sector. The beautiful beaches that characterize the Gallipoli coast are an important attraction for bathing and attract hundreds of thousands of holiday makers every year. The historical center of Gallipoli rises in the characteristic islet, located a few meters from the mainland. Along the city perimeter, the ancient urban walls rise up, punctuated by defensive architectural elements such as towers and ramparts built mainly during the modern Middle Ages. Crossing the Pacha Street, you reach the heart of the historic town, where St. Agatha Co-Cathedral stands, that is the representative monument of Gallipoli's religiosity and devotion. St. Agatha Co Cathedral is a jewel of the 17th century Salentinian architecture, embellished by the elegant and minute architectural details that decorate the corporal surface and which highlight the niches that house the stages of St. Agatha, St. Sebastian, and St. Faust. Inside, you can admire the vast pictorial patrimony distributed on the counter facade, along the full ceiling and throughout the core of the building. The main pictorial theme recalls the hagiographic events of St. Agatha, immortalized with great skill, 
by the 18th century painter Nicola Maninconico. As early as the 4th century, Gallipoli was an episcopal seat, whose site was then merged with the Diocese of Nardot. The building is flanked by the Palace of the Episcopal Seminary, an 18th century construction built in copper stone by the able master builder Adriano Prete. The clock tower, built between 1702 and 1714, interrupts the architectural continuity. On its façade, the two dials of the solar clock and the mechanical clock are imposed, while in the lower order stands the civic coat of arms of the city of Gallipoli, a rusa accompanied by the motto in Latin. The characteristic narrow streets of the old town are home to wonderful examples of late 16th century and baroque architecture, home to the families of the city's aristocracy. In the allies that are intertwined in the plots of the village, it is easy to come across the popular buildings of Salento, in particular in its typical manifestation of the courthouse. Walking along the long passions, you can admire the pleasant landscape of the Gallipolis Bay, a real enchantment where the palaces of the village meet the iron and horizon. The religious devotion of Gallipoli is expressed in the forms of the confraternity churches, true artistic testimonies of popular faith. Typical of the Gallipoli's devotional Marian expression is certainly the little church of the Virgin of Purity adjacent to the homonymous beach. The oratory inside shows its artistic pomp, identifiable in the precious stucco decorations and pictorial cycles distributed inside, which reveal some enchanting hidden beauties to the visitors. The 19th century china floor blends with the wooden stalls of the confraternal officials arranged along the wall. Wonderful is the effigy of the Virgin of Purity, painted by the famous Napoleon brush by Luca Giordano. The Carpero stone is the protagonist of urban architecture and we find it in the Church of the Rosary built by the Dominicans at the beginning of the 18th century. Next to the church there is the ancient convent of the Order of San Domenico, now a municipal property and an important container of the cultural life of Gallipoli, to which the urban laboratory Liberal Arte and the center of the sea culture Marea have given a great contribution. In the cloister some frescoes are still visible, paintings that celebrate the saints linked to the order of preachers such as Thomas Aquinas and Saint Catherine of Siena. Gallipoli, with its amiable shades, is a unique city, able to combine the charm of natural landscapes with the taste and elegance of the art of Salento in a context where there is a strong appeal to tradition and antiquity of history. is located near the entrance to the city and for centuries it has protected the fortunes of the city of Gallipoli. It is conceivable the pre-existence of a military building from the early Middle Ages that modified and expanded as usual by the alternation of the Norman, Angevin and Aragonese rulers. In the Spanish age, important upgrading works were carried out, such as the construction of a circular layout, built to protect the entrance to the city and subsequently isolated from the rest of the fortress. The 
castle was protected by a wide moat and the access to the building was guaranteed by the presence of a drawbridge. That of Gallipoli is a military structure of great prestige, functional to the protection of the city for defence, both maritime and terrestrial. The construction of the covert market, built near the ancient façade of the castle, dates back to the 19th century. Thanks to the recent redevelopment, the spaces have returned to public use and animated by bars, flea markets and shops. To date, the castle of Gallipoli hosts many national cultural events in its new and important museum. In the heart of the historical center of Gallipoli, in the rooms once used as a civic hospital, you can admire the important collection of the Emanuele Barba City Museum. Established in the 19th century, thanks to the donations of illustrious citizens of Gallipoli, the large museum hall houses numerous pieces relating to the naturalistic and archaeological history of the territory. A journey through history starting from the Mesapian era until late antiquity in a style typical of the cultural institutes of the late 19th century. The museum houses the zoological cabinet of the naturalist Emanuele Barba, a collection rich in fossils and mineral elements. Everybody remains enchanted by the tradition and solemnity of the spaces in the Civic Museum, a treasure trove of culture capable of arousing amazement and admiration in the eyes of its visitors. The Municipal Art Gallery, located in Balsamo Palace's halls in Via de Pace, is important for the pictorial history of Gallipoli. Here are preserved several paintings belonging to the Coppola family, donated in the 20th century to the city of Gallipoli. Here you can admire some masterpieces by the famous painter Giovanni Andrea Coppola from Gallipoli, who lived in the first half of the 17th century. An artist of considerable skill. Coppola is one of the masters of the Baroque Solentine painting and his refined and elegant technique is highlighted in this interesting collection of works. The library and archival universe of the city of Gallipoli is enclosed in the picturesque walls of the Oratory of St. Angel, now home to the municipal library and the historical hardship. Evocative is the monumental stairway of the late 18th century, which seems perfectly integrated with the context of the sinuous forms of the stuccos and the arboreal elements, which here have assumed the same rococo appearance of the architectural context. Inside, there is an archive and library heritage of great value. In fact, at the Institute there are several books printed between the 15th and 16th centuries together with an important documentary heritage characterized by the famous Red Books, testimony to the political, economic and social past of the community of Gallipoli. In the ruins of Rochi Palace, you can visit the Museum of the Sea, a varied and impressive collection of marine zoological finds 
with a section reserved for different species of cetaceans. The Maritime Museum offers the opportunity to travel freely in the world of marine biology, ideal for both families and professionals. The culture of the show in Gallipoli is represented by the Garibaldi Theatre, located in the old town of the city. It was built in 1825 by the gentleman Bonaventura Balsamo, to be then purchased by the municipality of Gallipoli in 1874. The building in its interior recalls the architecture of the Italian theatres, elegantly adorned with precious damask fabrics and full-bodied gilded stuccos. The Garibaldi Theatre is a small treasure trove of the art and culture of Gallipoli, still active in the programming of important prose and cinematography shows. The island of St. Andrew is just over a mile from the old town of Gallipoli. Its physiognomy characterizes the entire landscape of the city, particularly enjoyable by the long passings of the west. The island has an area of 50 hectares, it is elevated to meters above the sea level and it is the heart of the regional natural park of St. Andrew and Punta Pizzo. The highland habitat is strongly influenced by particular environmental conditions such as the high salinity and the very low soil moisture level which causes desertification phenomena. The island is controlled by a lighthouse of the Navy built in 1866. Recently restored, the bulk of the building with its white plasters stands out of the whole landscape. On the island of St. Andrew, various species of birds find rest, among which the presence of the coarse sea gull, an endemic species of the Mediterranean, very rare in Italy, is of particular interest. The naturalistic aspect of the regional park continues in its picturesque scenery along the part of the Gallipoli coast near Lido Pizzo and Lifoggi. Here, the sandy and coastal environment takes on the peculiar characteristics of humid and marshy habitats, creating a unique landscape enlivened by the colors and scents of the shrubby Mediterranean scrub. The sandy coasts of the Gallipoli coast are spectacular, marked by the presence of the ancient coastal towers. Some of these buildings have recently been redeveloped by restorations and intended for public use. These include Torre San Giovanni La Pedata, located in the homonymous shore which has now become the site of a marine biology science centre. It still seems to silently watch the horizon, while its 16th century size overhangs the blue of the Ionian, as if to admire the fantastic beauty of the Gallipoli landscape. 